welcome back to another episode of A Rambling Yarn. This is my podcast where I talk about my yarn and what's on my needles or my crochet hook and if I happen to have any other crafty projects going on, I share them here too. Uh, if you have just stumbled upon my little nook over here in YouTube, the great wide world of YouTube. Welcome, I'm so happy to have you. And if you're a returning viewer, thanks for coming back. It is, well, it's been just a little bit since my last episode. It is now October, we're halfway through October. I don't know why I ever really bother with saying when I'm recording these things because due to life circumstances being a mother of two crazy children and they are my full-time job i don't get around to editing very quickly like some other people do i wish i could but that's just the reality of it and that's that's totally fine this is not my job this is a just a little project of love and more or less a self-documentary for myself to remind me in the future what projects I've made and the progress that I have also made. So right now where I am, it's been really rainy, really windy, really chilly, and I love it. I love it so much. Um, the only downside to this is having two very rambunctious little boys who really need their outside time. And it's a little difficult to do that when it is just so wet and cold outside but we actually we managed to run around a little bit as it was sprinkling before it got too too cold <sighs> but yeah they need to get their wiggles out and it's really difficult to do in this sort of weather and this is my favorite kind of weather because it means to me it's like a good cozy curl up with the project and the movie and get super comfy and yeah just be cozy it's cozy weather This will probably be a little bit of a shorter episode, which is fine. I try, I've been trying to make uh, make these videos a little shorter and easier to just get through, but it doesn't always happen. But this time I don't really have too much. So let's start off with my finished objects, of which I only have one. Also, I've been playing around with hair color a little bit. Um, so my hands are they're really fun. I'm, I kind of feel like, what's her name? Is it Vi Violet Beauregard in uh, Willy Wonka? You're turning Violet, you're turning Violet, Violet. <laughs> it will wash off. That's fine. I don't really care. I'm not, I don't need to go anywhere and be presentable and that's just fine. So let's start off with my finished objects. So I think the last time on my last episode, I had, I had finished, I don't think I had completely finished the Mama Cardigan by Pip and Pim. I think I had, I had finished a sleeve and maybe had started the second sleeve. I can't remember, I'd have to go back and watch it. But I do remember standing up and showing the length of everything. And I was not 100% sure how I felt about it. I thought that it was it was cute and I could get away with it. It kind of, it landed right, um, kind of right, right at my hips, maybe a little bit above. It was almost, almost like a cropped length, like maybe just an inch or two longer than a cropped length cardigan. And I finished off the sleeve and then I blocked it and I was not even aggressive when, with my blocking. I kind of, I pulled the stitches because it's made in honeycomb brioche. I pulled it out more than I pulled like down. But I, as I always do, underestimated how much super wash yarn grows. So let me show you just uh, just 
how much it grew. I should not have been worried about the length at all. Because it grew. It grew down to... Yeah. <laughs> it's nice, though. I... It's now it feels kind of like an oversized cardigan. And if I'm honest, I actually, I kind of want to add pockets. Cause I, I keep, every time I wear this, well, every time I wear anything that doesn't have pockets, my hands are always going, and I don't hold my hands in pockets often, but I find myself reaching for pockets, which I do not have here. So I am contemplating taking what I do have left of this main color. This, by the way, this main color here is called Titanium. It is on a merino nylon two-ply dyed by Fiber for the People. And what I used for the ribbing and for the bottom portion of my sleeves is a one-of-a-kind Lucky Strike colorway, also by Fiber for the People, called Peat. Peat, P-E-A-T, like peat moss. So vibrant. I just, yeah, there's a few rows, you can kind of tell, where I lost uh, track a little bit when I would be starting off my, it's a four row repeat, and I would lose track um, on my working side or the right side what I had started with on the previous right side so it is what it is it didn't change the length or anything but it's just so it's so long so yeah that is my that's my Mama cardigan designed by Pip and Pen in all Fiber for the People yarn, titanium, and peat. And I think I would make this cardigan again, but maybe plan for it a little bit better and not just work with stash yarn. So I have just a couple of works in progress. I started making myself a pair of mittens using this really luscious, squishy one-ply paired with a lovely fluffy cake of mohair and together they make this so this is the first I do, I guess I do actually have another finished object, but they're downstairs. I made my oldest a pair of mittens. I've just kind of been on a little, I just want to do little things. And now that we're starting to get closer to when we're going to need things like this a little bit more, I'm jumping on mittens. So these are for me. And I love that little halo that's going on around it. And this is the, I think it's, I think the pattern is the world's most basic mittens, I think, or easiest mittens. And it's a free pattern by Tin Can Knits. And I will say if, if you are interested in learning how to make mittens or just kind of the concept of mittens or knitting the round, this pattern is amazing because it has sizes from baby to like very large adult, and not that there's that many sizes when it comes to mittens, I guess. It's not like a pattern would be. But for anybody that you would want to make mittens for, it's got a size for that. And the pattern is also written so that you could make them in any way you want from, I'm, I think, lace, if not lace, the lowest would be fingering, all the way up to like super chunky. So whatever, yarn you happen to have that you're like this feels like it needs to be made into mittens doesn't matter what weight it is they've written the pattern up for that so you're good no matter what no matter who you're making them for and no matter what yarn you are using 
and that's just really amazing. It makes things so easy, so easy. So I've gotten to the point where I have, I mean, my body is done, so I gotta work on my thumb. I had it on there and then my cat, I left it for five minutes and my cat ripped the needle out and started playing, I mean, I can't blame him, started playing with this and this is amazing. Both of these yarns are dyed by Rim Dragonfly. I'm pretty sure I actually have one of her cards. Hold on. Rim Dragonfly. She is a dyer and she also spins some of her own yarn um, out of Manchester, Connecticut. This is the first time that I've worked with any of her yarn and I was actually gifted this yarn, I think for Christmas last year, by my loveliest, most fiberiest friend, Bella of Fiber and Fox, who I adore. If you haven't, if this is your first time <laughs> watching my podcast, you, this will not be the last time that you hear about her. We have known each other since like first grade or something like that. I don't know. Since we were six or so. And have gone through our little fiber journeys together. So she is, you know, my, she's my, my yarn girl. It's really hard to buy yarn for people when you don't do a lot of yarn stuff yourself, but she's all in the yarn. So she knows, and she knows me, and she knows that purple, purple is my favorite. So this, this is special. I'm so excited. I've kind of been sitting with this for a while, getting other things done, and trying to decide what exactly to make with these two things. I was pretty sure I was going to hold them together, and... I did kept thinking mittens would be a good good way to go and that was correct. So these will be the most luscious, squishy, fluffy, warm things that I could ever want to have on my hands ever. So those are my mittens. Almost done with the first one. Other one will not take me long. They just, they knit up so fast. So fast. They just flew. Whoop. Still plugging away at this. Now that um, now that my big sweater projects are off my needles, I decided it really was time to put a little bit more consecutive hours into this shawl, which is honestly, it is really almost done. I have about that much left. I don't know. I know I have a little bit more of this lying around. This is 100% cotton. I believe the I believe the brand is Yarn Bee, which you can find at Hobby Lobby. And I got this three years ago, maybe. It was a little while ago. I really, I haven't been, at least since we moved to Maine, I really have not been in a Hobby Lobby and I don't know if we really have any around actually, now that I'm thinking about it. I don't know, but, so this is all 100% cotton. This is gonna be for my mama. I have no pattern for this. I made another one in acrylic yarn a little bit before, and my mom really liked it, so I, I took this yarn, which was being made up into something else, and decided to scrap that and turn it into this. So, a shawl it shall be. And it is almost done. It's nice and soft. I, I used to work with cotton yarn all the time uh, for various, well, I guess for bags. Um, I used it in children's blankets because it was really easy. Granny Squares, I actually have a whole afghan, a, a chevron, like a chevron granny square afghan that I have on my couch, which is one of my absolute favorite blankets. The weight of it feels so good without being really, really hot because it's cotton. 
I used, yeah, I used to use cotton a lot, but I've kind of, I don't know why I've drifted away from it a little bit, but I'll have to see if I can find some more, some more patterns that I can incorporate cotton back into. I actually did use some cotton yarn and I stitched up this pair of overalls that I'm wearing, which I bought from Target a few months ago and they came in. They've got holes in the knees, you know, because that's the style and it's cute. But I tend to forget that when I have pants that come with holes already built into the structure, that that almost never works out for me because I, I'm really hard on my clothes for whatever reason. And not intentionally, I just am. And with all the up and down and bending around, the holes grew to the point where I basically just had a slit all the way up my thigh and it is now continuing down the other direction towards the foot of my pants, pant legs, foot. So I have had to patch those up. Here, I'll show you with my cotton yarn. Yeah, so I took this and I just kind of wove it. So that will be nice and sturdy. It's not going anywhere. Get me some more wear, but then the rest of it is. So I need to do, <laughs> I need to do this part because my legs are very well ventilated and I really don't want that. And while I'm at it, I think I may also just make some really cute granny squares and put them on once everything is kind of seamed back up. Maybe just fill in, fill in my knee holes with granny squares and just yarn punk the whole thing. And then I'll get more wear out of them, hopefully for a longer amount of time. Because these are so ridiculously comfortable and I love them so much and I want to be able to keep them for a very long time. But I can't do that if they just rip in half long ways. That's a little problematic. I'm problematic. He's a problem. Bo Burnham, anybody? It's a tea day. My mother-in-law got me this, which I... Right, so right. I love to garden, and I actually noticed that my tomatoes out there, with all the wind and the rain that we've gotten, also the fact that it is the end of October, I think they've lived their best life, and it's time for them to go. I need to rip them out. But I love to garden. My mother-in-law knows that. She also knows that I am addicted to new mugs, and she got me this back in May, May or June. Called it Big Kindness. And this has become one of my absolute favorite mugs. I love this one so much and I reach for it all the time. Oh, it's got a little plant in back. Little details. But today it is holding, wow, my, my fingers are so pink next to my white mug. Today it is holding a really lovely cup of chamomile tea. And I'm a monster and I don't take my tea bags out so it's just getting continually stronger. few episodes back, I mentioned that my aunt and uncle down in Florida happened upon an estate sale and ended up uh, coming together with my mother and myself and we purchased a whole bunch of yarn and they shipped it up to me. All of this absolutely amazing 100% wool, definitely not treated. Um, I believe he said that According to the people who were running the estate sale, the yarn, the wool had all been milled and dyed in that town. So it was all very locally sourced, which is really cool. But I've been sitting on this for a little while. There's so much of it. There's so much of it. And a lot of it is in a chunkier weight, which I don't use very often. I seem to have kind of gone in the direction of mainly using DK and sock weight yarn for my projects. 
on occasion worsted weight but usually DK and fingering weight yarn so I've been sitting here trying to think of what to use this for and meanwhile there are a few stitches that I've been thinking about trying for a while but have never been able to really think about what to put them in as far as a project goes and or you know or find there's a fly somewhere that was distracting oh I have I I've lost my train of thought there are a few stitches that I've been wanting to use in something for a while but I haven't really known how to go about it I haven't been able to find patterns that kind of match up in my head of what I'm thinking that also incorporate the stitch pattern that I want to use and to be honest it's actually been a really long time since I've just slapped something on my needles and just gone with it which I used to do all the time back when I was a really new knitter or I am actually a lot more comfortable doing that with crochet it's a little bit more intuitive for me and I don't know why that is probably because there's a little bit more wiggle room of at least in my head, the way I think about it, if you've got something going on crochet, it's it's easier to rip things back or change things rather than with knitting. If you've made a mistake or you don't like something, it, it takes a lot longer. And maybe that's why I've been more comfortable just winging stuff with crochet. But either way, it's been a really long time since I've really just flew by the seat of my pants with anything. But I started something. So one of the stitch patterns that I have been very intrigued with for a while now but I've never actually used is fisherman's rib or I guess what I'm doing is a half fisherman's rib. So it's it looks like you know your knit one purl one just basic ribbing but it is extra thick and squishy because you are doing knit one purl one but when you're doing this is being worked flat um, when you're doing your knit stitches you go and you put your needle through not the not the stitch that's on your needle but the one that you did previously so you would go through like this this stitch right below it on your knit stitches. Your pearls, I believe, are just worked like a regular pearl right off the needle. And I've just I've just been really curious about playing around with that sort of squishy texture. I figured if I could do honeycomb brioche, I could do this. And I am. And I decided that I was going to attempt to make another cardigan. And we'll just see how it goes. I have no pattern. I really should do like you know stop for a hot second and do a gauge swatch or something just to kind of figure that out I don't have the intention of writing an actual pattern but I am going to take notes as I go and just see I actually have not looked on Ravelry or anywhere else to see if there is already some sort of fisherman's rib, half fisherman's rib cardigan like this. There probably is because there's so many, there's so many things. And it's a, it's just a little baby right now. I don't know if you can really, it's just a little, I don't know. We shall see. Um, I'm kind of, I'm basing the, not the measurements, but Kind of the way it's worked off of what I did with the Mema, which I guess is pretty much any raglan style top down cardigan. So we will see if that kind of technique and flow works with this. So far it's going well, but I'm kind of just 
paying attention to what's going on on the needles and just working with it that way. But I'm kind of excited. I am liking how squishy, liking how squishy this is. And it's definitely going to feel like a very rustic because the wool is untreated, so it's got that scratchiness. But I'll keep you updated and we'll see how that goes. Lastly, as we are at the end of October, I had a birthday and it was kind of a big one. Um, I turned 30. I'm s still not sure how I feel about that, but that's not going to change the fact that it happened. And one of the things that I did get, it was, we, we did just very small things. We did take a quick little trip down to visit our family. My sister has a birthday five days before mine. So we just had a really lovely time just celebrating together. And my friend Bella bought me these beautiful things, little, little purpley things. There were some stitch markers, but I think those have already been stashed away in a bag. But this, this, I do not know the name of it. I need to, need to go on her website and see, but I got a really gorgeous little mini skein dyed by Lane and Lotus, who is a dyer out of Connecticut. Oh my goodness, look at, I, I don't think, I find something new every single time. This little streak of gray here. It is just this kind of really pretty, almost pinky purple lavendery color with some darker darker speckles in there and so so this cute little cute little guy oh my gosh I I'm loving how how did I not realize that gray was in there it's showing up so well on the camera so I'm excited about that so got this little guy who is I think 20 grams 20 grams I mean it's a mini and then this, which I do have a skein from this. From this company. Is it Chopel? Chopel? Maybe? It, I believe it's a German company. The Zauberball? Crazy? I have, I have another one in more like dark red, green. Um, not particularly my favorite colors, but I think maybe they would be great for like a pair of men's socks. But she found this one, and I think, I don't know if you can see, it's got a little bit of a chart. So you can kind of tell how it's, how it might work up, how that gradient word would work up. And, yeah, Chappelle, it's all like in German. Which is fun, because I don't speak German. I wish I did. That would be really cool, but I don't. Thankfully, there is some English on there. But it is strong quality superwash. 25% polyamide, 75% virgin wool. And then 25% nylon. So I'm wondering... Because it's got a twist to it, because it it's it looks almost like it's too uniform to be hand spun, but because of the twist of the two different colors, I'm thinking that probably half is virgin or untreated wool, um, and the other half is superwash, so it's it's probably a mix, and I will have to look it up and see, but it's probably a mix of superwash and non-superwash, along with the poly polyamide um, and the nylon. So, I guess maybe this could be washer, machine wash friendly, although I think there is a tag. No, well, maybe. I still probably wouldn't put it in the dryer. I, I feel like if somebody hand knits you something, and if it's made of anything other than acrylic yarn, I am a strong believer that you should hand wash that forever and always. Amen. Because why would you take the risk? But now I have more purple in my ever-growing purple collection. 
and I'm just so in love with it. It makes me so happy. So thank you, Bella. This was probably one of the loveliest gifts that anyone could have received for turning 30. I don't know what I'm going to make with these. Probably socks. I feel like really squishy, warm socks. Purple socks. Well, that's all I got for you guys today. Thanks for joining me as I was able to give a little bit of an update and take some time to do this. I hope that wherever you are, you're cozy and you've got something on your needles. Till I see you next time. Happy crafting. Bye. I don't see you. Good afternoon, good evening, and good night.